more examples of being able to find the limit of a sequence. This time we have the sequence c sub n is equal to n squared plus one divided by the square root of three n to the fourth plus four. Um, as always, we're gonna take the limit as n approaches infinity of n squared plus one divided by the square root of three n to the fourth plus four. And again, our trick is to always divide by the highest power of the exponent of the n in the denominator of the highest order term, which is gonna be this animal right here. And if we think of that as the square root of n to the four, we're really gonna divide everything by n squared. All right, so, um, so if you do have a radical, you wanna make sure that you go through and simplify. Um, I don't wanna say simplify, but just think of it in the context that it's really going to be whatever the radical is affecting the highest order of the polynomial or whatever it might be in the denominator. All right, so in this case, we're gonna have the limit as n approaches infinity, and we're gonna divide everything by n squared. So it's gonna be n squared over n squared plus one over n squared divided by the square root of three n to the fourth plus four divided by n squared. All right, now here's the trick. We're gonna move this n square underneath the radical, which really just makes it n to the fourth. All right, so all we're doing is we're just making it more complex, this n square, and we're just essentially just multiplying it by the index, and the index of this radical is a square root. All right, so you can always think of it. So if it was like a third root, then we would multiply it by three, et cetera. So now this becomes the limit as n approaches infinity, we know that n square over n square is one. And then we have one over n square. And then in the denominator, this is going to be three n to the fourth over n to the fourth. Um, and then we have this four over n to the fourth. All right, so let me erase this. So we have an n to the fourth here plus four over n to the fourth. All right, and technically, what happens with this is it just becomes the square root of three n to the fourth plus four over n to the fourth. And then I just broke it up into two separate little fractions, right? Now, one more simplification, this becomes lim as n approaches infinity of one plus one over n square divided by the square root of three plus four over n to the fourth power. And now we can go ahead and apply the limit to anything that contains an n. And not surprisingly, if it's in the denominator, um, if we only have an n in the denominator, it's gonna to go to zero. So this just turns into one plus zero divided by the square root of three plus zero. Um, and two ways to be able to write this, we could write this as one over the square root of three, or if we wanted to rationalize it, we would get square root of three over three. All right, either one is fine. All right, um, and just in case you forgot how to rationalize it, um, you would just take one over the square root of three and multiply by root three over root three, and that would give you the square root of three over three. All right, just to remind folks of how to do some of that um, trigonometry or the algebra that you would quite frequently see in trigonometry. All right, another example is with the arctangent function. All right, and the arctangent function doesn't come up too often, right? But we wanna make sure that we understand what happens as the values approach infinity or something of that nature. So we're gonna take the limit as n approaches infinity of the arctangent of n cubed divided by n plus three, right? Um, and now what I'm gonna do is divide everything inside of the parentheses by n, which is the highest power in the denominator. So this is gonna be the limit as n approaches infinity arctan of n cubed divided by n divided by n over n plus three over n. And simplifying this, the limit as n approaches infinity of arctan now in the numerator, we have three n's and one n, so that's gonna be n square in the numerator. n over n is one, and then we have plus three over n. All right, now this is a little bit different than any of the ones that we've gotten thus far, all right? Um, so what we're gonna do 
is we're going to apply the limit. All right, now we know that this is going to go to zero, but this is going to be infinity squared, which just goes towards infinity. So it really just becomes arctan of infinity over one, which is really the arctan of infinity. Um, and that kind of warrants the question of what is the arctangent of infinity? So we take a look at the graph of the arctangent function. All right, we might remember that the arctangent looks something like this. Okay, I know it's not perfect, but drawing on a screen. And remember, infinite, as the limit goes towards infinity, we're really looking at those horizontal asymptotes. And so what happens as in this graph, n goes towards infinity, um, that means that the output for the arctangent is going to go towards pi halves, all right? And down here, this is negative pi halves, all right? So we just have to remember and be cognizant that the arctangent as n tends towards infinity is going to be pi halves, all right? And just keep in mind that the arctan of negative infinity is going to be negative pi halves, all right? So keep those two in mind um, as we go along. All right, now one more example of this. Um, we have another arctangent function, but this time we have n cubed. All right, so, um, so let's divide everything by n cubed because that is the highest power of n in the denominator. All right, we're not too worried about that square root of three. So this now becomes the limit as n approaches infinity of arctangent. And remember, tan minus one is the same thing as arctan. All right, so just in case you haven't brushed up on your inverse trigonometric functions recently, all right, just remember that they mean the same thing. It's not one over tangent. Um, and I'm going to divide everything by n cubed. So that's going to be n cubed over n cubed plus n over n cubed divided by n cubed root 3 over n cubed plus 3 over n cubed. All right, and now I'm going to simplify this. All right, and it looks kind of ugly, but it's really not all that bad. So we now have the limit as n approaches infinity. Um, in the numerator, n cubed over n cubed becomes one. n over n cubed becomes one over n squared. n cubed root three over n cubed just becomes the square root of three. And then finally, nothing to simplify. That just stays three over n cubed, all right? Now we can apply the limit. And these are both going to go towards zero. OK, and I forgot the arctangent in here. So let me squeeze a tan minus 1 in here. So sorry about that. OK, I was so focused on the algebra. forgot to copy out that inverse tan. And unfortunately, I can't go back and erase it. But regardless, so now we're going to end up with the arctangent of 1 plus 0 divided by root 3 plus 0. Or in other words, that's the arctangent of one over the square root of three. All right. And this is where it's helpful for us to kind of remember some of those more elementary sorts of inverse tangent um, functions, all right? Um, and so it might be helpful for you to go back and look at a chart. Okay, I think that there's one that's on that help sheet, the, um, the, uh, the table that you have to be able to look through. Um, to be able to do like the basic sorts of trigonometric identities, et cetera. Um, but um, now don't forget that this is the same thing as tan minus one of root three over three, if that's helpful, all right? Um, and remember, we got that because we just rationalized it, okay? So we just did it up here by using our rationalizing technique, all right? Um, and so this is actually going to turn into 30 degrees, okay? Um, or that's the same thing as pi six, all right? Um, and what might be helpful for you is to have like a table of these arctangent values. So let me really quickly to conclude this video, um, just to write those out really quickly for everybody so that way you have them, all right? Um, and so let's say we have our theta, and then we have our tan of theta, all right? And so let's say, for instance, we have zero, well, the tan of zero is zero, right? Um, and then if we had pi six, that's one over root three or root three over three. If we have pi fourths, right, that's gonna be one. 
And if we had pi thirds, that's going to be the square root of three, right? Um, and we already know what happens as um, the arc tangent goes towards infinity, it becomes pi halves, all right? So um, let me erase this really quickly. So we have a little bit of room, all right? And then at pi halves, we know it goes towards infinity. So to get the arc tangent value, you would go backwards, all right? So if I wanted to find the arc tangent of root three over three, that's how I got the pi six. So it might be helpful for you to have this table, all right, um, either memorized or probably memorized at this point since we're in calculus too, um, but at least off the side. Um, so that way you can be able to evaluate these arc tangents. All right, so uh, we have a few more of these to do, all right, but hopefully this gives you a good remembrance of some of the things you might've seen in Calc 1. Um, and we're gonna take a look at a few more um, difficult problems in the next video or videos.